Ah, classic. One of the most anticipated releases of a 15-year-old game. If you aren't familiar with it, you may be thinking to yourself, uh, why the fuck would several million people be losing their shit over the re-release of an old version of their game? And the answer to that is that long-running online games nowadays go through a lot of changes in their lifespan. And before you know it, the feel of that old game you fell in love with may have already been wiped away. In contrast, you can always go back to your favorite single-player games and play them in pretty much the exact same state you remember them in. Classics release intended to officially bring us this option. I won't go over every single positive and negative, since I don't want this video to last 5 hours, but instead I'll just quickly go over the most major points in my eyes. Although Classic has been amazing to play through, I can say that there's aspects in which it's shown to fall flat on its face in a pile of shit. Now let's start with the good impressions. I have to say that Classic has succeeded in reviving the community in a state that I hadn't seen for a very long time. I've been invested in all kinds of WoW content for quite a while now, and honestly WoW videos are what initially hooked me to even get into YouTube. Memes, videos, compilations, and anything like that felt so much more colorful and alive. And it really reminded me of things that the community was creating around 10 years ago or so. People were inspired to create entertainment simply for fun. Players just seemed like they cared about the game a lot more. And that was really cool to see. Apart from that, when talking about in-game, I appreciate how the game gives you good reasons to interact and group up with other players. These interactions really give life to the game and your engagement with it, regardless if they're good or bad. Which can lead to you having more memorable moments within the game. I can definitely say that that has been the case for me, and during leveling alone, I've had some of the best fun in WoW in a long while. Whether it was an interaction with someone while waiting for a quest and getting ganked, or when I was questing with a group in an elite dwarven hold, and after we jumped down from the second floor on our way out, the warlock's pit went all around the back, pulling six elite dwarves to us, and got us, and another group wiped. All these moments become memorable due to the high stakes on the line, and at the end of the day, creating memories like these is very important to me. You can also see how a lot of these silly situations have inspired a lot of my videos. That also becomes more of a factor since it's much easier to familiarize yourself with the players on your realm and recognize them later down the line like, hey, it's that guy from Eowyn Forest when I was level 5. Now he's in my raid group, ninjing on the loot. Ah, small world. Immersion. These interactions that I talked about are further strengthened by the world's ability to immerse you. Classic really puts the RPG back in MMORPG. If you think about retail, it's always zip zap from place to place all the time, which really hinders your ability to appreciate the in-game world. While in Classic, everything is in a much more slow down manner, which also makes the world feel that much larger. You barely have any flight paths, no mounts or heirlooms, you're broke as fuck, and sometimes you just have to run, often long distances too. Along the way, you'll notice all the other players doing their own quests and stuff, all the cool zone landscapes, and the mobs existing around you, and especially when those amazing ambient soundtracks hit you. Oh my god! That's when the game world really shines and you can truly appreciate it. And I really mean this, experiencing the world through the classic lens allows for whole new levels of immersion. To add to that, this immersion gains an extra layer, especially on PvP realms. While in retail you can avoid the other faction for the most part, especially through spamming Dungeon Finder all day, in classic, once you're high enough level, you're basically forced to quest alongside the enemy faction. And while there's still a lot of passive players that'll just ignore you, there's still those that are ready to fuck you up once they see you, and that always keeps you on high alert. This sense of likely danger makes every task high risk, whether it's mining, questing, or running somewhere to meet up with a friend, and I honestly find it very thrilling. This was especially crazy during phase 2, when everyone was scrambling to climb honor ranks and there weren't any battlegrounds yet. Azeroth was an actual war zone back then. Another aspect of the game that really helps me connect with the character I play is the stronger identity and RPG feel of the classes. 
In retail, there's a lot of overlap in terms of what each one can do. Like how most of them now have tons of damage mitigation, self-sustain, gap closers, burst damage, damage over time, crowd control, escape tools, everything. And that can really lose that special feeling in my opinion. Although in classics, some classes can perform way better than others, at least everyone feels like they have something unique to offer. All in all, these have to be the biggest positives that left an impression on me. And now I'll move on to the negative impressions. Min-maxing, tryharding, elitism, gatekeeping, whatever you want to call it. Before Classic's release, I was really excited for the idea that it may be such a chill goof fest. Everyone doing whatever they want, not worrying about over-optimizing and just trying out fun builds. Like, why would we? We know the game in and out. When I saw cool things like apes getting world first molten core a lot sooner than people expected, even with some people below level 60 in their group, I just felt like the theory was true. Endgame classic content wasn't some impossible nightmare that you'd have to be extremely prepared for, but you could simply do well and roll it over if you played just well enough. But boy, was I wrong. Oh, you're the wrong race? No invite. You're not a specific class slash spec? Uh, no invite. Rift Paladin? <laughs> Hilarious, wow! Oh, guys, look at this fucking idiot choosing Red Paladin. Oh, wow! What a clown! Imagine getting this guy and having our run be a little bit more efficient. <laughs> ah, funny, funny. In all honesty, I think that we need to acknowledge the reality that not only the WoW community, but the gaming community as a whole has matured and changed throughout the years. Most of us are already used to most game mechanics and concepts. We're often pushed to find the most efficient ways to complete our tasks. We also have tons of resources like guides through which we can optimize our overall gameplay. Even then, I was still so surprised to see the sheer colossal amounts of min-maxing and tryharding in Classic. Nowadays, especially on smaller realms, if you try to go out in the world and level as normal, maybe search for a dungeon group, well, all I gotta tell you is, good fucking luck. Because almost all other people leveling will be getting boosted through dungeons 24-7. Why would someone spend an hour or two forming a group and doing a dungeon with you when they can simply pay a mage like 7 gold in city fk while they go around and pull the whole dungeon and AoE it down in one minute? Man, you might as well be playing one of those cheap ass mobile games where you pay a currency and simply wait for like 10 hours for your dumb task to be completed. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I also want to clarify that I'm not sitting here trying to tell you that you're playing the game wrong if you min-max and try hard a lot. Not at all, that's fine, people choose that gameplay style often. The problem is how rampant this seemed through my eyes and from those of people that I've talked with about this. Like god forbid someone didn't complete some min-maxi task to save you 10 seconds on your raid run. I even feel like a lot of people playing like this aren't even happy about it, but are instead pushed and influenced into it. Like they feel like they have to do it because everyone else is doing it. It seemed like a lot of the community was a part of some inexistent esports organization constantly racing each other for world firsts. Like, why? Some people that decided to just fuck around with Classic went ahead and did silly shit like clearing Onyxia with three people or only with druids, just for the fun of it. Why does fucking Terry, your guild newbie, have to be screamed at for not raid logging with his world buffs ready when he just wanted to play a bit more on his main this week? It's so odd to me. That being said, they have recently added a completely new item to Classic WoW, the Chrono Boon Displacer, which lets you save your current world buffs and then you can reapply them at a later time. This is honestly a good way to stop all those crazed world buff maniacs from shooting themselves in the foot by only raid logging and shaping the whole meta around it. And this is when we reach Classic's main disgrace. All the farming spots, once filled with several players, now littered with bots. Almost everywhere you went, they were there. All day. Obvious as fuck too. You see those seven guys farming lions and bears all day in the main road between Tarn Mill and the human farms? Yeah, those are bots. Their odd straight line movement and unchanging rotations make it painfully clear. Some people thought it was a momentary thing, the cheaters seeing a moment of weakness in Blizzard's defense, that they will soon get what's coming to them, right? Look, there's no way to know anything about Blizzard's internal affairs, but even after executing ban waves, where they stated that over 70,000 bots or so had been banned, 
there was still no change in my eyes. I could still see the bots all the time. Anywhere. With time and little to no change, things were starting to get desperate. And this is when I started noticing that we've entered some weird kind of a dystopian phase of Classic. Players with time started accepting the bots as a part of the game, seeing as not much was changing, as they began to attempt fixing the issue themselves by figuring out silly ways through which to mess with the bots. With TBC Classic coming up, I decided to make a fresh character and just play a bit. I was having fun, just doing some quests and running around and eventually I got to Bloodhoof Village. And the first thing I see there was a stack of 10 to 15 Tarn bots, spawn camping, a chain resurrecting Night Elf bot. And... And that's it. I... I mean I was fairly speechless. And this was a really hard hitting moment for me at the time. I honestly just stopped and thought to myself, man, why am I even playing this game anymore? I, I really just felt disappointed. But goes without saying, I encountered many more bots along the way. This got me thinking, how can they not get one GM, one, to just fly around Azeroth for a couple of hours? I mean, they're clearly painfully obvious. It's not like I'm out looking for them, not at all. I'm just trying to play my game, but I can't help keep encountering them. Obviously, they know they're safe just botting in the open. This happened at prime time on a Wednesday evening. So it's not as if this is a hidden operation or that there's any fear of punishment from Blizzard. Whoever's running this operation knows that Blizzard can't or won't do anything about the severe botting epidemic. This should tell you how many there is of them. It almost makes me think like they don't want to even bother banning them. <laughs> what is it, Blizzard? Is it because of the subscription money they bring in? Okay, I'll now give you a pitch for a cool and helpful addition to your game. <clears throat> when I was younger, I used to play this free-to-play MMO called Rohan Online. It had some pay-to-win stuff in the in-game shop, but it wasn't anything too crazy, just some experience boosts and stuff. And later down the line, uh, the game started dying out, and some bots were starting to run around a lot more often. So the greedy devs thought of an ingenious solution. Two birds with one stone. They simply added a new in-game store item called the Hunter Kit. Ooh, sounds sweet, huh? What does this Hunter Kit do, you wonder? Well, you might have already figured it out. Yeah, it just brings up an inbuilt menu for botting. That's it. They straight up added a botting software to the game. Which you could purchase! Active Blizzard, my friend, this will make a great addition to your future classic in-game shop. Nobody will complain about the bots anymore, because guess what? They will be a standard part of the game, and you'll make lots of money. Come on, you know you want to. You can't help yourself, can you? It will even work so well in retail too, seeing how rampant those Boomkin bots are. <sighs> I think that if Blizzard really wanted to deal with this, they'd figure out a way to make some inbuilt anti-cheat code in the system itself. I'm sure they know all too well that a ban wave once per year won't do jack shit and stronger measures need to be taken. I obviously don't understand how these things work too well, but a good example is how they're currently dealing with the multi-boxers. That has really seen huge improvement for the better, and I'd want to see similar impactful actions being taken against the cheaters. Now all of this ties into another big issue in Classic, which is buying and selling gold. If you're unfamiliar with the recent trend of GDKP runs in Classic, it's basically when several people set up a raid group and invite people who can then bid on items that drop with gold. And you can see how someone buying gold from a third party website with two clicks can impact this little situation, hmm? Not sure how you guys see this, but in my eyes, this is pretty much pay to win. Oh, you want that greasel dawn of ruin? Well, good luck! If Mr. Fat's tax over there decided to treat himself this week and has bought around 400,000 gold on a website and is ready to throw it all down, well, that's it. That item literally sold for 200,000 gold in Classic. 200,000! Classic, not retail. Bro, I don't even know if I've even ever gotten more than 700 gold to my name. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I was actually shocked to realize this was a thing to begin with, and I think Blizzard must step in on issues like this. Again, you can see how bots tie in, 
as it's easy to assume they farm most of the gold for those websites. Now I do think some changes have to be made in order to balance out all these current day trends that are taking away from the game's experience, as mentioned earlier. Now of course in the very beginning of Classic, before it even came out, people started becoming very adamant on the idea of no changes, and honestly I couldn't blame them. The game was already going to be in a state that I knew I'd enjoy far better than retail, and I honestly couldn't trust Blizzard with integrating changes, since their design philosophies seem much more different nowadays and wouldn't really fit old WoW in my eyes. But if they include small, well thought out additions to the game that wouldn't interfere with the overall feel and instead amplify it, then it could be very beneficial. Lastly, regarding the negative points I spoke about, I want to reiterate that I am not throwing the blame for these things on the more frontline employees of Blizzard, like GMs and whatnot, and I'm not throwing all the blame on the community as well. Even though I think a portion of them should chill out a bit with striving for perfection all the time, and you know, learn to be a bit more accepting and open. This all comes down to the higher-ups at Blizzard that are responsible for more impactful decisions, and they're the ones that are letting us down. If they want all this to not end up as the burning dumpster, they have to start caring for the game better and continue updating it with small changes that would help bring out the real classic feel of the game in the current day. Although I'm no longer as excited for TBC Classic as I was for the original Classic, due to the negatives I mentioned earlier. And among other reasons. <coughs> <laughs> I'm still sure I'll have lots of fun playing it, even for a bit, so I'm at least looking forward to that. And on that note guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Slash kiss. See you. Also, I'm currently live on Twitch and hosting a transmog competition, so feel free to come hang out.